This segment has been sponsored by Pro Bikes Caribe. Pro Bikes Caribe, get yours today. Before we get into today's interview, hear a little bit about the book from the author themselves. Hi, I'm Emmy Wilson from beautiful Trinidad and Tobago. For the young and the young at heart, I've written To Be Great, poetry inspired by love. It delves into human relationships, self-discovery, courage, and embracing personal greatness. Find my book on Amazon in paperback and Kindle. Greetings, listenership. Welcome to TLC, Tropical Literature Creatives, the podcast where we interview authors of Caribbean heritage about themselves and about their literary works. Today, we have with us the marvelous Megan Wilson, author of two books, Illuminations and To Be Great. And believe it or not, the author of a third book, which I think that she'll be sharing with us a little bit as the interview progresses. But for now... Ladies and gentlemen, Megan Wilson. Thank you, Mr. George. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for agreeing to be interviewed, Megan. All right. So we are here to discuss my work. Uh, yes, yes, we are. And in addition to you, we'll call a little bit about your Caribbean heritage and how it has affected your work as well. All right. So I am a born Trinidadian and... Um, I come from a heritage of also St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Ah. Um, yes, my family on my mother's side are from St. Vincent and those islands, those little islands there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just, we have a humble background here in, the Trinidad, in Trinidad and uh, my heritage influences my work in the way how I may put words you know, we Trinidadians, we have a special way of putting things and saying things. Indeed. So indeed. when I, I, I realized that that was pretty unique uh, compared to other English speakers in the world and other people from the Caribbean region. Yeah, I've seen that you've had such a really mixed, a mixed background where Caribbean heritage is concerned. There's a question that I usually ask my guests. Uh, it's really a scenario. Uh, imagine, you know, we encounter each other at the airport, a meeting, I'm coming to Trinidad for the first time, and you, you know, have you have your roots here. Uh, what would you recommend that I try if it is I'm visiting Trinidad for the first time? I would just go off. You would see my face beaming up. First of all, I would say go and try the cuisine. I would say get some food right away, you know, because we have very rich our flavors, our cultural background, you know, we are a, a melting pot of, of traditions. So I would say, first of all, get yourself something to eat. Try anything. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you exactly which one to try. Go, mm -hmm. go make a list and go through the entire list because it's a different, you know, blend on um, array of flavors and textures that are unique to us mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. some of our foods are similar with uh some of the other foods throughout the caribbean but we have a you definitely have a unique um taste and then i would say go and explore go and see what fauna and flora is out there and just go and dive dive into you know the the society i think we as a people we're very friendly we like to um meet new people and and hear their experience experiences so i would say that is definitely something that you want to do and then check out the artwork check out our artistry you know if you see a souvenir shop maybe you might see something that's handmade or if you go if you go to Tobago, I I think you will definitely find a treasure. Oh, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, again, from Megan Wilson, you have your directions. Now, Megan, uh, we are here to discuss your work. Can you tell us a little bit about the books that you've written? Not too much, you know, but just, you know, a little bit, a brief synopsis as to each of the books that you would have done. Each of the works that I would have done. So I would start, first of all, with my first work, um, To Be Great 
which is poetry inspired by love. It's a uh, it's supposed to be an inspirational collection for anyone who might have struggled with disappointment or heartbreak, any sort of loss, anxiety, or depression. And uh, it's something that you know you can read to uplift yourself and make yourself feel better about just about anything. I believe writing or poetry, reading poetry can be a way of finding some sort of healing for yourself. And then I have my second work, which is, um, it's actually a cookbook. That's why I talk about the cuisine. I am bananas for our cuisine. And so are, I'm sure, many other Trinidadians as well. We are very proud of our our hand, so to speak, in the kitchen. So I definitely want people to, if it's something that you have never tried before, or maybe some of us, we come from backgrounds where our parents made some of the foods, but not all of the foods. I wanted to put all of that in one book to have as a personal and as a treasure, as a family treasure. And then my third work, which is another poetry collections, it's 99 poems. It's called Illuminations, Poetic Lessons for the Creative Soul. And this work I created specifically for my creatives, my artists, people who like to create, whether it's through in the kitchen or it's with a sewing machine or it's with, or if it's with a paintbrush, if it's with the pen, it doesn't matter. There are some words that I put in there to motivate you to make you feel seen, to make you feel understood that we as creators, we don't, we're not AI. We don't pump out work like a machine. We need to feel inspired. We need to get the message and in the, in our little bubble in order to go and move forward, in order to create. So those are the three words that I have created thus far. Right. It sounds like you cater for, for a group of persons, they're artists in general, but something for persons in particular. I, I like your addition of the cookbook. I, I didn't see it on your website, but it's a very welcome addition to the work that you do. One of the okay. things, one of the things that I, and maybe this is just me as I'm not a writer like yourself. I always think that persons who write different genres, that it's, it's like a challenge to them for them to change from like one genre to the next you know like a like a music artist who is accustomed doing hip-hop and they switch to something like like r b or something uh was the transition for you from one style to the next from poetry to cookbook was it different or was it difficult it wasn't difficult for me because this writing is originally and officially i, I that's all i do i write it doesn't matter what i write I can write anything. I can write, for example, for sales copy. I can write for uh, inspiration. I can write just about, I can write short stories. And it's something that it's, it just comes natural to me. I wouldn't say that I am strictly only a poetry writer that may be switched, you know, from one genre to the other. I would say that I have those dynamic skills where I can write across the board. Were you always such a good writer? Or is it something that you had to get a lot of practice in doing? I was always a very good writer. Um, I've been doing it from since form one, form two. And it was something that I have to say through practice, I was able to get more experience, more critique, and a better understanding of how to fine tune my craft especially to meet not just my standards, but other people's standards. Mm, well said, well said. <laughs> you had mentioned that you were capable of writing like for seals, for example. Uh, are you a full-time writer or do you have employment in, in another field? You would say that I'm a full-time writer and I am full-time many things. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense <laughs> I, I, i'm hoping that you would you would elaborate but you know yeah it, it make, does make sense a little a little but please it does elaborate. make sense from a entrepreneurial perspective you uh -huh. wear many hats and as an entrepreneur you know it, it doesn't matter everything is full-time mm -hmm. no matter what you're doing and you have to 
sometimes switch different skills that go into different other fields. And I'm an artistic person by nature, so I'm always creating things and uh, that I know would be of use to others. So I would be, for example, if it's content writing, content creating, or creating wall decor, anything along the lines of art and creativity, you could probably find me there. To this end, as you've been doing a, a lot of writing, the method at which you chose to, to get your works out there, did you get it using traditional methods? And what I mean by that is, are your books self-published or were your books traditionally published? All right. So my books are all self-published. And um, I, you see, the thing is, is that I had worked with many other writers before I published my own work. And uh, I saw how they went through their publishing process. And there was something about doing my own publishing that caught my attention, that made the project 10 times more exciting because you are in everything. You are behind the scenes of everything. You're not just putting it in someone else's hands. No, and I have a lot of respect for people who publish traditionally. But then there's some of us who choose to go the other route. And that, that is quite correct. A number of authors who I have interviewed or who have been mm -hmm. on this very same podcast, I mean, their reasons range from, well, from cost, um, having the, the creative liberty to publish what it is that they want. Because when it is that you go through the traditional publishing method, um, there may be things which may be um, removed from, from, from the writings, which the author yes. is at ease with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah, so so I, I hear you with that. I hear you with that. Uh, in terms of the self-publishing process, some persons, um, they, they think that it's easy, you know, when they go through the process to others yeah. who are not, not, not so keen on, on, on learning something new, they may find it a bit difficult. But for you, was, was the learning curve steep or was it something that figured out with ease? All right. So this was something that I figured out. I would say that I'm in the middle where there when it comes to the creative aspect, um, putting words together, maybe putting, you know, putting everything in a nice little package, so to speak, the creative process was pretty simple and easy for me. But then there's a part in publishing where it's a, it gets a bit technical. And uh, I would say that's where I struggled a bit and had to learn for a bit to find out all right, how do I go about this and how do I fix this? Because even if you're self-publishing, people tend to believe that they can just do things their own way. And yes, you can, but your self-publisher, wherever your vanity press, that's another word for it, would have certain requirements. And those requirements, if you're not too familiar with how to create and put that together, then you might bounce your head, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And I, I, well, I'll actually get back to, to that about it in a, later. Okay. All right. Uh, as it's the case, how has the reception been for your books so far? Okay. So for my books, you asked about my books. So <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I have to tell you about all three of them then. So my first work that was the that was the baby right that was the first one that came out and it was highly anticipated by people because initially i was writing and i would post you know poetry words of poetry on my social media and people would say wow this is really good you should you should write a book and lo and behold at the time i was actually writing a book and then soon after i brought it forward into the world and people paid a lot of attention to it. I got a lot of really nice reviews about it. And I'm so grateful and thankful for those who have encouraged me and inspired me to write and to produce my own work. Because mind you, my poetry at the beginning used to be something personal for me. And I just only thought to share that with people because I realized, well, listen, 
other people might be feeling this way too. So that was really nice. And then I decided to produce my cookbook. I had been living abroad. Um, at one point I was actually locked out <laughs> of the country with the COVID lockdown ah. and locked into um, the country where I was at. I was in Norway at the time mm -hmm. and I've been there. And I got this wonderful opportunity to meet so many different people from so many different cultures. I'm talking South Korea, uh, Singapore, the United States, Thailand, uh, France, so many different places. And they were all curious about, well, what is this food like? And I created, I was, that, I was cooking the food mm -hmm. and I allowed them to taste some of the food. I made doubles for them. I made mm. pilau and mm. these other other little things. And even with my Norwegian uh, people, I shared with them. And people really showed that, wow, I enjoyed this is so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna proclaim to be an expert cook. I just like our food and I believe in creating whatever you're creating, do it the best that you can. And the next thing I knew, I was writing a cookbook and giving it to them and sharing it with them. And they really, really appreciated that. So that was the inspiration. They really inspired me to create that book. So it was really well received. And then my third book, which came out very recently, is called Illuminations. And that book, it's anticipated. Right now, we're in the process of getting it out to people and um i'm excited about who the people the the people who are going to be inspired the people who are going to enjoy i have friends and other supporters all over the world who have purchased the book i humbly thank you and uh, i hope that you can pass it along buy it as a gift for someone this year and uh Especially if you know that they're artistic and creative, there's something in there for them. I, I, I really like how it is that, I don't, I hope I'm not cutting across what it is that you, if you were going to say more. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> no, I, I was just going to add that I was just really encouraged as to how it is that your cooking book came around for, for several reasons. Yeah. The world that we live in so, so, well, the world that we live in right now, there are so many <laughs> factors that lead to divisions among persons and here it is. It's great to see food. And in particular, I have to feel a sense of pride, you know, food from Trinidad and Tobago. You know, you mentioned doubles, you mentioned pilau, and you know, my yeah. started to swell with pride, you know. You know, I, I know that food, you know, I beat my chest, you know. You know, yes. I, I know <laughs> I know that food. And here it yes. is is bringing persons together. I can't I can't help but be encouraged when it is I, I hear, you know, accounts like that. So I mean it's your work. I mean and you put your effort into it, but you know, as a fellow Trinidadian, you know, I feel a sense of pride as well. You go out there and you bring the world together through food. Mm -hmm. I, that had to be a wonderful experience for me. No, it, it sounds like that. It sounds like that. Uh, in, ter in terms of your books, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, the cookbook there, you know, even with has Trinidadian recipes, I'm sure that it was well received by persons who you would have presented it to. Uh, what would your thoughts be if it is that your books, both poetry and even the cookbook, were to be adopted as tools for to help persons with their reading and comprehension skills? It would be a great, some, in my mind, this is something that I would feel very honored. I would feel very humbled about because I, I used to be a teacher. I used to teach English. Interesting. Interesting. I'm passionate about teaching people I'm, I'm ex I get the tickles <laughs> when I think about helping people <laughs> to learn and you know reading is, is is such a it's a basic skill it's such an important skill and if to know that people are reading work any of my works that would help them with comprehension or reading I would say oh my goodness thank you first of all and if you need me to create more for you to, to learn, absolutely. I sign up. I volunteer. 
Yeah, you, you just said that, and I was thinking of you know the Hunger Games movie. You know, I I volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I, I, I do you see yourself? You know, I mean, we we just I just give you this scenario about your book being used to help persons with their reading and comprehension skills. But yes. do you see yourself, you know, mentoring or, or training persons, uh, maybe other writers as well? Yes, I do. And uh, I know, yeah, I can tell you that initially, I have been focusing a lot on creating my work. But now, as time goes by, I see the importance of, okay, I've gotten the experience. Now it's time for me to share um, my experience with other writers. So currently, I'm building my YouTube channel. And uh, I'm creating content for fellow writers to teach them, to show them the ropes. Even if they are not, they, you can't, even if you feel like you can't call yourself a writer yet and you have this dream to be a writer, but you don't know where to start, or maybe you don't think that your work is good enough. I want to, I definitely see myself volunteering again to give advice to hold your hand to lead the way step by step so that is something i look forward to doing moving forward and that's encouraging to know and it's encouraging to hear I, you had mentioned that you have a youtube channel and i also noticed that you have a website um seeing that you would have had to learn to, to do your self-publishing uh, did you have to learn to do these things or is this something that you um, outsourced from, from, from skilled persons? Initially, I outsourced from skilled persons to help me with many different things. But again, I found out, listen, I can learn how to do these things as well. I, it's the excitement part. It's the learning. It's the addictive learner in, in me that just wants to find out, figure out, how did you do this? And how was that created? That has to be, hello, I'm a creative person. I could figure this out. So I had to go through my learning curve, my ups and my downs. Mm -hmm. And it's something I'm proud to say now. It's something that I can do. I offer this on my website. I help other writers to, with them, everything from brainstorming their ideas, to copy editing and proofreading, to creating their website, marketing. These are things that I have gained, I have gained, sorry, knowledge from other experts, from people who have known and done better than me, and also from my own experience. Proud to say that. Yeah. And, and proud to hear that. Proud to hear that. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> As you found yourself in your role to, to mentor persons from time to time, um, for persons who might be listening to this podcast, who might want to uh, maybe follow in your footsteps in terms of being a writer, putting together a book, might be a, a book of poetry, or even if it's a, a book on cooking. What advice mm -hmm. do you have for those who are listening right now? My advice, if you want to put together a book, whether it's poetry, your cooking, recipes, is to really think about who you'd like to speak to. Think about the purpose of creating your work because you initially can't, there, there, there are a lot of things that you have to consider. You can't allow yourself to get lost in La La Land that, oh, my work is going to do so fantastic and I don't need to, all I need to do is just write. You need to have an idea as to why you're creating this work. See the need. If you see that there are people who struggle with something, create something that is a, that would be of value to them first and foremost. We have heard about many writers and authors who have made themselves millionaires and multi-millionaires and i will tell you one time if you want to be that that's fine but do not try to 
do not let that be your reason for writing or for publishing anything. So go through the process step by step. Don't take any shortcuts. Find a mentor or someone who can help you. Remember, I didn't just jump into this unknowing and, and not knowing anything. I gained experience and you can find someone perhaps like me, I provide mentorship. I can give people advice as to how you can do things. Let it be someone who is experienced in what they have done because there are a lot of people who are happy to say, oh yeah, I'll publish your work and they take your money and they don't really care so much about your work and the reason why you put your work out. So again, I come back to the, the point about make sure that whoever is helping you, your mentor has, has the experience and wants to see you thrive, wants to see your work thrive and get your message out. Whatever money that comes out of that, whatever profit that comes out of that, worry about that later. But you, as a writer, as an artist, as a creative, you know why you're here on this earth. You have a message to share with people, and your job is to get that message out. So that's my word of advice. Right now in the world, you know, one of the challenges that persons have is encouraging um, persons, in particular young persons, to read a bit more. Um, do you have any advice, being an author, being a teacher, that listeners at this point in time can apply to themselves or can apply to their children to encourage them to read a bit more? My advice, and this is a question that I've gotten a lot. In the time people hear, oh, you're a writer, oh, you were a teacher, oh, I had this 10-year-old child, I can't get them to read for nothing. My words of advice is to be encouraging, encourage them to read. Show them that reading is fun and exciting. And you can't show that something is fun and exciting when you can't convince your child that something is fun and exciting. When you yourself are acting, your attitude towards reading is there. <laughs> your attitude towards reading is like, uh, I couldn't be bothered. You yourself, you as the parent, remember your, your children are, are watching you and they're following you. If they see that you are excited about a particular show, guess, and you, what do you notice them doing? They all become excited about that TV show as well. So again, with the, the emulation, you have to create that environment. Okay, I'm going to read this book. Susie? Come, I'm going to read this book and I'm going to read it to you. And I'm going to show you that I enjoy this and I want you to enjoy this too. Read with them or read to them, right? And uh, over time, it may not happen overnight. That's why you have to encourage them. Give them words of encouragement. Did you read something today? What? Tell me about what you read today. What do you think about what you read today? And be on it. But the attitude of, oh, I tired, I, I tired tell you that, you know, I tired tell you to read, I tired. And this sort of attitude, it's not going to help. You're going to continue to be tired, unfortunately. Mm. Okay, well said, well said. So persons who are listening, yeah, I think we put it from, from an authority on the matter. Um, yes, absolutely. Miss Wilson, um, in terms of yes. the, in terms of the books that you've written, if it is that you wanted to get copies of these books, where can we get copies of them? In my books, you can get them either on Amazon. You can find my books on my website, which links to Amazon. However, if you are interested, if you are in Trinidad and you are interested in purchasing any copies, you can contact me via my website, fill out the contact form, let me know. I would like to get a copy of your work and I can get it straight directly to you. 
locally because I know not everyone can or would purchase via Amazon and these other platforms for many different reasons. If your best alternative is to do it via a bank deposit or anything like that locally, and you don't want to use a, a debit card or a credit card or anything, make contact with me and I will make sure that the book gets to you. Okay, so we have no excuse. We it, it, once no we get excuses. excuse. <laughs> okay, well, uh, Miss Wilson, those are pretty much the questions I had for you today, and it brings us to the end of our interview. Uh, thank you very much for for agreeing to be interviewed about your books and about yourself, and and sharing details about your life with us. Thank you so much for having me, Kevin. It was a great pleasure. I had a lot of fun talking with you today and to your listeners. And um, yeah, I hope all the best for 2024 for everyone. You've been listening to TLC, Tropical Literature Creators. If you've heard something of interest or something you like, reach out to us, reach out to our authors, follow us on social media. We look forward to hearing from you.